Okay, Baldy. <laughs> uh, Mark Falkel, Tina, Art Machia, Marky, Steve, Beam, Darren. <laughs> oh, I think Oggy was here, Gadgy. There was, everyone was here, it was a wake night. Dave Wilson. And we all decided, because we like going for a nice quiet drive, didn't we? And uh, so we went for a nice quiet drive. We always go to an here because it was like, you know, it was different up there because it was, it weren't like urban. It was country lanes, it was nice going to the 18. Nice, nice and peaceful. So we went to um, Arfordshire, it was right up, the, up a bit to the 18, the old 18. Not all that loop bit they put in. And we was near the old Happy Eater. And somewhere around there, there was a fall in the road, and it said, uh, Warning, do not use the fall after heavy rainfall. And uh, yeah, if you're sort of 20 years old, I'll build an old, an old deck, an old army, there's an old place bike, someone's been tapped. Oh, has he got someone on the deck? So, uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going up, uh, we, we turn off the A10. He said, we see this sign, do not use fall after heavy rainfall. Because the rivers all swell up. And uh, there was a stick, and it's sort of busy here and all that. But obviously, if you, you're not a sort of a local, then, uh, you stupid fucker like me. We'll take this out of it, which I didn't. And everyone goes, go on, you'll be right, you'll be right. <laughs> so I just, so I'm looking at the river, and it was pitch black, so you can't see fuck all. So I thought, oh, I'll go for it. And uh, I started creeping in, and it basically the water started coming over the bonnet. And uh, <laughs> you could hear the fan churning it all up. <laughs> Oh god, and I had these speakers and they was in the floor well, passenger foot well. They weren't mounted in, I think they were Darren's. And uh, he was holding them, Mr. about, and uh, Darren was sitting in the front and uh, I can't remember it in the back. <laughs> so I says, look, and, and the air, well, the air well, was going through and it was just sort of hard, you know, it was, it wasn't doing too bad. And, uh, and then it just cut out, and uh, <laughs> it was Mark behind us and Stevie Mason, and uh, I can't remember whose car they was in it, but they were all fucking cracking up laughing, and it was horrible. I hated it, and, but I was like, I was like laughing and hating it at the same time, you know. It's like it was funny. And I said to Darren, I says, right, let's undo the windows. And, uh, I'm sure you're using the back one. He went, yeah, it'll remind me. And uh, I, I said, just climb out the, don't open the doors, climb out the windows, because, you know, it's holding all that water out. And it was coming out halfway up the doors, the water. So Dad would just open the door up. <laughs> I remember it, it just came over my lap instantly, and all these speakers were floating about in it. I said, what are you fucking idiot, what are you doing that for? And he's like, oh, sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> oh, God, it was a nightmare. So we had to just get out of the car and push it. So we're pushing it up the other, towards the, the other side of the folding. There's a, there's a ramp there. And we're getting it, we're making some progress. There's a few of us, though, you know. And uh, the engine's now out of the, out of the, uh, out of the river. And um, why can't people just drive 70 on a motorway? Why are you going here? Fucking Arctic, and I've got to go around every country, you know, right? I fucking can't get the foot there. They've got, he's got a jag there. There's another one here in the boat. Wankers. Anyway, so uh, we, we pushed it, pushed it out, out and it, um, we just left it for a bit because you've got to watch your battery, you know. just. And we had the bonnet up and we was fucking around under the bonnet with it. Paul was a bit of a star that night when you made yeah. <laughs> And uh, 
we got it going, it started up, I couldn't believe it, but we were up and heading started, you know, it was, it's, the back end of it is still in the, in the drink, and it's mud, and uh, he goes, I'll get it out, he goes, yeah, jump, jump out, and I was a shit driver back then, I was fucking terrible, you know, I didn't even have a license and that thing. I was riding a motorbike or one, but I weren't too hard on the motors. Uh, I go straight line and stuff. But uh, then beyond that, I couldn't even, I couldn't park the fucking thing. It's too big. And, um, no end. And, uh, so Paul got it, started revving the fucking guts out. He had this two litre in it, so he had a bit of, you know, power there for the, for the time. But he was spinning a lot. Did you? And, uh, so what he'd done, he started bumping it up the uh, up this embankment, and because uh, it, I don't know what it, it might have been, um, it might have been a bit of oh, brickwork there or something like that. Because this surface where the, we were standing, it was just covered in it. was just mud and moss. It was like you know, it was a riverbank really, but a fault. But you can't, there's no grip there whatsoever. Anyway, he, he started bouncing it up, and the old fucking moat was getting like kicking. But it worked, it fucking, he got it out. And uh, it took a while, it took a bit of, bit of brute force. But we got it out, and I was, you know, I was great, because I thought I was losing, I was gonna lose my motor, like, you know. I'd had it nicked once, and he helped me there at all, him and Kev. We got the geezer doing it, didn't we? That was Christmas Eve. And it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. Yeah. Because how many years ago was that then? Dun, 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 dun. That was 84, that was. Yeah, that was 84. I was with Debbie then. Yeah, 36 years ago. And I got it back. That's another story. We come back on that one. That was a good one, that was. And, um. Yeah, he bumped. He got it out up this embankment. And like, all my mates are fucking roaring up laughing. And, I, and I've got this car. It's just full of fucking river water. And silt, it was just full of silt, and uh, there was all like fucking fish in it. No, there weren't, but it, it might as well have been. There's probably microorganisms in it. So I got it back, we got it back down in a Bronx ball and uh, filled up with that, uh, what's that? It was a Jiffy garage, wasn't it? We used to go, that 24 hour garage. Fucking moment. And uh, yeah, we got it. Down here, put a bit of juice in it because I used up a fair bit driving about, and uh, I would probably, you know, burn up a fair bit of juice trying to get it out of that situation. So we filled it up, and there's all the lads in there, and that was all fucking long. We want a fucking state on my and looking inside of it, and it's fucking, it was fucked. Anyway, so I got it home, I dig it home, right, two in the morning, probably. I got up to work next day, I got up, it was like a fucking. Eden project inside there. It was so hot and humid. I was driving down, I couldn't, I, it wouldn't be missed if the heater didn't work at the best of times. And uh, so I just drive down, I'm open the windows out, open, just to keep so I could see where I was going, like with a squeegee taking it all off the windscreen. And I come out of work now, I'm and it was fucking even worse if you'd been out in the sun. <laughs> but luckily it was a Friday. So we've done that on a Thursday night. And uh, I told Mark, well Mark was there eating, he goes, I'll get a carpet cleaner. And he got his carpet cleaner. I took, I had to take all the seats out, and I took all the carpet out, and he came out, he'd been at work, and he came out in the, uh, in the Saturday, late on Saturday afternoon, I think it was. And he got his carpet cleaner on it, and he just fucking, you could see the shit coming out of it, it was fucking mental. And he scrubbed it, and, it was just like like brand new carpet. It was better than it was before, before you know. So I worked in the factory and it all got a bit dirty and swapped for them cutting through it and all that. And um, I was like, how much do you? He goes, nah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, well, he saw it, he said, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. And uh, it's like, you could see like, they pumped water into it and then sucked it back out again. It was fucking brilliant for you, wasn't it? Uh, oh my god, anyway, I left it all out in the garrow and uh, it dried out because it was only like, you know, man made stuff. It wasn't like a nice 80 20 wall twist. <laughs> and uh, I put it back in sort of um, like 70s, 
understand the art now. Uh, yes, God, he was just a, like a new man. He was like, he was like a proper fuck valet. I loved it. I was like, you know, all proud of me. I was like, you know. So that was that, yeah. I, was, I loved my old car, too. You know. It gave me a lot of grief, but it was a great car. I did have a lot of fun with it. I like it, I've seen the photos of it. Uh, it was it was beige with a brown roof and it had uh, fog lights and spotlights on the front. I got them for Christmas. <laughs> and stainless put them on for me. Yeah, do the relay switch, I couldn't fucking I didn't know how to do anything like that. Electricals, I didn't have a clue. But I bought the relay switch and he put them on and charged me about 20 quid I suppose. But I had you know, I had a switch under me uh, near me uh, right knee and uh, of course we was always up in the, in the art for cheer planes and I used to hit this switch because he had a Mark 4 and all, or a Mark 5 I think he had the 2.3 which if I remember right it was a V6 and uh, he had the spots and floodlights uh, fog lights and all that radio ones they were out of India and uh, yeah so I had uh, I, I was in the spotlight and floodlight and fog light gang I was like, you know, I was, I was loving it. So uh, I went up the uh, up the lanes and bang! It was like, you know, out of like close encounter to the fur kind. I fucking love lights, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. I was I enjoyed that. Oh yeah, we had some Carlos Fandangos. That was good. Kevy Rundle. He had some uh, fold stud pattern. Um, they were slicks, they were massive fucking wheels. We put them on outside his house down O Lane one night just to see if they fit, and they did. And, um, ah, this is how it, oh, boy, I changed my head. No, it won't, no, it won't, because I remember, no, 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 it was no, so, no, no. Anyway, so one Sunday we went up to the beach, because I used to go out there on my motorbike and just, just pop around. It's only a 105, but you know, he had all the big boys out there with the uh, 900 Fs and Z1s and stuff like that. And they used to pop wheelies and sit on the, they used to have passengers to sit on the seat the wrong way round, put their hand on the floor with all metal shit in their hands and make sparks. It's fucking brilliant, I loved it. I mean, it was a fucking proper, like, uh, boys, like, Sunday meet, like, with the bikes and the cars. And one, what, yeah, we, uh, Kevin goes, come and we got the, uh, at the beach, and he stuck these rims in the boot, in the boot, and they had these huge, like, slick wheels on them, and uh, we stuck them on down the road. <laughs> and he go, everyone jumped out of the car, and I went round the circuit, and everyone's fucking clocking this car, they're all laughing, it's ridiculous. They were sticking out like uh, six to eight inches past the rims. Carlos Fandango, super wide wheels, Panama cigar advert, wasn't it? And uh, they was all waiting for me here aside in the crowd and I pulled up and we used to rock the motors about and get them spinning and I've done this fucking wheel spin I've bleached down Kevin was right into it like you know and I've done a fucking monster spin it was white smoke going everywhere and of course all the geezers up here you know you gotta do it properly or you look make yourself look like a right cunt you know what I mean and uh, <laughs> and it was a good it was a proper burnout and I, and I bumped one of the rockers off off the can and uh, under the cam, and I'm, anyway, I'll, I've got, I'd have burnt the clutch out as well. <laughs> but um, it was worth it. And I got home and uh, I took the cover off and I could see what had happened. And I just sort of leaving it back in and it clicked back in. So that got me at work again. The clutch was slipping a bit, but I whipped that out myself. I've got bins here, will me with that. He didn't like it, but I made him do it anyway. And uh, yeah, so that was another, another discovery with the old motors. Yeah, I said, like it, and then, um, I, mean, I, I got in the dispatch right and all that. I didn't have a car for fucking years. I just took my advice, but that's another story. See you later.